brilliant, very intelligent. But he uh, he just was just a yep. wanted to take care of people, and he did that all his life. And yep. in small towns, like at his memorial service, uh, pretty much everybody that came up to me said, "Well, your 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 father saved my life, saved the life of somebody in my family, brought me into the world, took uh. some took a family member out of the world." You know, it's just yep. Just that's a small town that's doctor. Span. You know, made house calls. Just yep. Took took uh, produce and for you know, exchange for p people paying their bills. They couldn't pay their bill. Yep. They bring them something. You know, that they grow. And that or, was. I mean, that. I mean, we have that as a story, but that was exactly how it was out of the uh, out of our time. And yeah. and you grew up. You grew up in. Now you were eighteen. About what year? Well, I don't know. I'd have to do the math. Do the math. Uh, it's sometime in like 70, 1970, 71, I guess. 71, and, yeah. I was, and I was 66, so I'm five years older than you are. Uh, and so at that time, was music important to you? Because you have a career. You have a career in Andy in in music you have you have been the 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 sound guy and the music guy for it's the symphony correct well yeah just the so, so I'll take you back to to your question so yeah. my parents divorced right before my senior year of high school and uh, and I I was already my dad and I were already having you know some problems so I've moved to Abilene with my mom mm hmm and so, the, and one of the things is that I wanted to play music. And my father, did, he was the sing, song leader at church. His brother sang with the Metropolitan Opera, an incredible singer. But he, you know, like. So it was in your genes. It was all part yeah, of that. Yeah. It, but it's, it's what I wanted to do. But I mean, it's a tough way to make a living. And yeah. so he wasn't supportive of that. And so uh, when I turned 18, he basically, he disowned me. He just cut me off. And so I was on my own. Wow. And, but I wanted to do that. And so I eventually, like I came to Austin and started playing music. And then the group I had was uh, uh, MCA Records paid for us to do a demo and it looked like there was a record deal in the making. And we were doing kind of, you know, Crosby, Stills and Nash kind of, we did our own stuff, but, you know, acoustic har harmony, it was at the beginning of the, pr what, the cosmic, you know, cowboy, progressive country. Right. Uh, you know, my contemporaries, the people I played some with are, Michael Murphy, Steve Fromholtz, B.W. Stevenson, you know, people like that. Uncle Walt's band, those were all kind of oh, friends of mine. Oh, wonderful. What an experience. And so, uh, but but in the, being in the studio, uh, that was the place that I just, what, as soon as I got in the studio and started working in the studio, recording, I just went, well, that is where I want to be. <laughs> this is the temple of music. You know, recording studio is where music is the total focus, and it's not about, you're not trying to sell beer, you're not trying to get people to applaud necessarily, you're just concentrating on trying to make the best music you can make, right, and to capture oh. that. And so, uh, that's, that just, from then on, that's when, that's what I want to do. And I got there as a musician, but, but eventually I really devote, decided to devote my career to doing that and I, I was so fortunate I had got, I got to meet and work with my heroes I mean uh, Phil Ramone, Al Schmidt, Rupert oh. Neve, uh, you know the Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter you know b besides just all the classical stuff I recorded I, mean, I think I've recorded Joshua Bell you know concertizing mm -hmm. with the Austin Symphony four or five times you know from the time he was very young I've sort of watched him grow up on stage and so oh. I've got this panoply, you know, of just amazing things. And you know, speaking of heroes, I've got to meet and work with Barbara Conrad, who's just an American hero of, to my, in my opinion, gigantic proportions. Yeah. So the, it was just, it was easy. I was so drawn to it and then just had just amazing opportunities all along the way. And so, so I just what went makes, alive. what makes it now? When you when you first got into the studio, can you compare the studio of what it was technologically uh -huh. and all compared to where we've gone and, and evolving and how you've evolved with it? Yeah, well, uh, when I was a kid, still in Dimmit, Texas, I bought my first reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. 
Like a web core or something? Well, it was like a Lloyd's. I remember it exactly. It was a Lloyd's. It was, it was a reel-to-reel. -reel. It was about this big, and it ran on batteries. Yeah. And, and you could change, and you, it, it had two speeds, and the way you change the speeds is you unscrewed the <laughs> screw on top of the capstan, you took <laughs> off this sh this. Sh thing and then it made the capstan smaller yeah so you, you know you could more rotations per well yeah. yeah and so anyway that's what I just learned by using like I just started yeah. playing around with the recorder and so I was really fascinated with it from the beginning and and because I could change the speed I you know do silly things like I would record myself eating potato chips and then slow it down you know and, yeah and it sounded like explosions and just you know you do the, the chipmunk thing and yep. you know you'd record stuff slower and speed it up and so you know just discovering the yep. sort of the possibilities and then when I first started to get into it professionally well there there was a thing I remember some of the, another recorder I had later on this is before sound on sound. Uh, if you wanted to play with yourself, right. <laughs> as it were, you could. That's all like one. we teenage boys do. Right. That's what we we spent a lot of our time, you know, trying to keep from doing. We wanted to play with the girls, uh, but uh, the before that, before I d uh, got a hold of uh, something you could do synchronous overdubbing with, mm -hmm. you'd figure out there was a time delay. You know, you had a you had a, a record head and a playback head, so you could play back something that was recorded, but before what's called cell sync it played back a little later compared to what you're hearing going in. So I figured out the time difference. So, so you'd have to play ahead this certain amount of time. And so it sort of dictated the rhythm of the song to some degree. But, and, and that's also how, you know, like Elvis and other, that, that slapback thing that got sure. used, that's sort of the same way that that happened. No kidding. But then, uh, you know, pr pretty early on when I actually got the opportunity to go start working professionally, uh, you could do what's called cell sync, where you could record some tracks and then you could overdub it, and you could hear it in sync. And the way that that hap the way that worked technologically is you put playback electronics from the record head, so in, it, it happened at the same you know in time at the same space. So what you played is 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 in sync with what was already there on the Probably. tape, and that's what made multi-track recording possible and and Les Paul is the one that's responsible for that I mean he, thank thank you Les Paul the father of modern recording yeah and uh, so from there like it started at, like when the Beatles were doing stuff not just the Beatles but others it was three track yeah and so initially like if you listen to the Beatles stuff you'll hear all of one thing on this channel all things on this channel mm -hmm. there'll be stuff in the center and it was mostly mono broadcasting back then so it was very very mono, mono compatible but uh, but you didn't have discrete panning where it was actually a matrix uh, of across a stereo image. It was it was left. I mean, you had a button that said mm -hmm. left. You had one that said center. You had one that said right, and that's what sent oh. it to you know this channel center. You know these three channels, and and then eventually they th that expanded and you know what became the modern thing. We went from eight track. What well, went to four track and then eight track. And then 16 track, and then 24 track, and so on uh -huh. and so forth. So that just that just opened up all the possibilities for for doing like what the Beatles did, what the Beach Boys did. I mean, what became you know modern popular recording techniques that allowed it, people like me that that weren't great at playing everything perfect the first time. Mm -hmm. I could work on stuff and kind of do it again until I could get it right, and you could other people could add their thing later. And, so that was how you know multi-track developed, and and it was all on tape, you know, reel to reel tape, Absolutely. you know, and big tapes, analog. And, and the thing that people, if you didn't do this, the thing that you would never really know, is that tape has a smell. Like I could tell you by smelling the tape, this is Scotch tape, this is Ampex tape, this is Agfa, uh, because you'd rewind it. Like if you, once you've done a recording, you leave it tails out, so it doesn't uh, do print through where you'd hear this little echo of something before it happened. And so when you start the project, uh, after you record something, you rewind it, or if you're going to do overdubs, then you, you sort tails out, so you have to rewind it to start it again at the beginning. And when you do that, the smell of the, the tape comes wafting <laughs> up from it the machine. It permeates the studio. Well, it's not, it doesn't go that far away, but if you're, you're over the machine, and so yeah. it's just something, it's just part of the experience. But if you, didn't, if you didn't actually do that, you wouldn't know that. That's not something that you would know if you no. hadn't experienced that.
And your sound, so, so to listen, <clears throat> so how many more tools do you have today? And when we're, th when we're thinking about this and, and, and where we're going, because I mean, I was talking with some of the other, other musicians that I have, what does, <clears throat> what is classical music and what does it mean? What is there, is there the wonderful genre, wonderful aspects of every single genre that in, been, end up elevating it into that, that, that outstanding area? And this is what I think that the, the musical studios that we have today, now you can get in touch with that and bring whatever it is to the top. Well, you, yeah, you can, and, uh, but at the same time, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you my journey. Please. Going through you know, the, this whole process of modern recording, multi-track recording, then MIDI, MIDI came along, which allowed you to take synthesizers and record all these gestures on, on synthesized instruments mm -hmm. and then have those play back and have that be part of the thing. Anyway, I spent years really perfect, you know, learning how to do all this stuff. And, but after, there was a point that it just became not unsatisfying. And, and here's why it was unsatisfying is that you, you start, people would start, you know, and myself included, you start to nitpick everything and you were actually putting performances together. You were assembling them, you know, it was, and so after a while it became tedious to some degree. And so I, I said oh. to myself, Self, here's if you could do whatever you wanted to do, what would you do? And I said, I what I really like to do is to record acoustic instruments as much as possible with everybody playing at the same time in the same room, if that sounds the best, and the widest range of all possible musics. And I got to do, I mean, I got to actually live my dream. I, I got, I was the chief recording engineer at UT, I taught recording, I recorded, I've recorded gamelan orchestras, I've recorded, you know just the widest range of things. And Austin Symphony, uh, big bands. I mean, there's nothing better than a great big band. There's nothing sounds better than that. And, and, but, but the thing is, is I've recorded live. Live was the thing. And there's something that happens live that's really hard to recreate. There's an energy, mm -hmm. especially when there's an audience. People, you know, performers it's, just... It's, it's, a, it's an exchange. Yeah, oh yeah, it's very very much an exchange. Each one feeds the other. And uh, so that that was the other thing that just, just makes it exciting. But, but I went from, uh, you know, very complicated systems to going to, to making the simplest setup that I could make. I'm, my philosophy became, I'm a minimalist. So I would have the fewest microphones that it would take to capture the sound that you, that you wanted to. <laughs> And, and I, EQ, like if I have to use EQ, there's something wrong. You know, the right mic in the right place, that was my philosophy. And so, oh. you know, it takes a little bit more time up front, but the result to me is really great. And you're trying to, especially with acoustic music and concert music, at least I felt like what I'm trying to do is to capture the, uh, realistic, you know, like, it, like I want the listener to feel like they're there, you know, at the concert. And so I don't, I'm not putting effects. I'm not. I'm trying to do as little. I'm trying to put the technology. I'm trying to pull the technology out of the way. Is probably the best way of saying it, which God, is actually beautiful. harder than you think. Oh God, yes. <laughs> oh God, yes. And that but very we, satisfying. That, so, so what? What are you at this time in your life? What are you interested in? What? What? What is still? you know, pulling you, saying, hmm, this is an area I want to explore and continue to grow, because you've continued to grow over your career. You've continued yeah. to have this as, a, as an elemental part of your personality and your vector. Well, the only thing that I w would have liked to have done that I didn't get to do uh, is to do, is to mix for film. Yeah, you know, I've worked some on some film stuff, but to actually do, do the script score mixing like I'd love to mix John Williams you know score for a film I mean I never got to do that and the people that do that do it really well I'm, I've just got you know I'm just they're the greatest oh. in my opinion because they bring all these things together but and the other thing too is the composers like John Williams all the film composers the really good ones are really good at this they 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 leave a hole for the dialogue. You know, they score, they voice 
you know, how they're orchestrating and dynamics, all this stuff, they leave a place for the dialogue. Oh. That When they're scoring it, they've got that, so they're pacing to that, but they leave room for that to be easily heard and understood. And you still have the power of the music, you know, wrapped around it and giving the emotional impetus for whatever the scene is, but that's a real art. I mean, that oh. takes years to really perfect that, you know, and get to where you can whip out the kind of stuff that the great film composers do because they're in demand and so they're just writing all the time, you know, yep. and, and have a system. Well, what is the talent here in Austin? When you, oh, when you, boy, when you look at it, it, it feels like that this is a real, this is a node, an attraction that has a huge amount of talent. Oh, God. It, yeah, it has for a long time. Uh, and I, the reason I think that, one of the main reasons is the university, I think is one of the main reasons that happens because it's attracted people from all over the world and all different types of, you know, performers and musical styles, but also audiences, you know, audiences that are m more educated, as it were. And so they can appreciate this. And, and each one feeds the other where great audiences attract greater musicians and so on and so forth. And, but we have, like, oh, in every form that. of music, and that's the other great thing that happens here is synthesis. There's, like, all these different styles of music that, that get synthesized and made into new forms of music. You know, where, where like, conjunto or Latin gets put with, you know, punk or reggae mm -hmm. or, you know, electronic music, you know, is put with acoustic music. It's just, you know, it's like people, whatever you can imagine it, people are willing to try it. And there's, a, there's an environment that nurtures God. experimentation. That is a, that is amazing, and uh, well, I mean, now you're, you're you're helping me to to understand. I, I see it on the outside, and I feel it, and I and I intuit it. But I but now I can see some of the underpinnings, some of the going behind the scenes, and and seeing how it. And, and I love I love what you said about the educated audience because it, it feels to me that we're in a time of incredible sophistication that. The audiences, we're exposed to art. Oh, yeah. Even if you watch cable television or you watch any television, you're watching a 30-second story when you're watching a commercial. Mm -hmm. And they're constantly working. We're constantly bombarded with beautiful... I mean, every one of those scenes is lit. Everyone is at work with. The actors are working and giving the best performance. That has having an effect upon us when yeah. we're constantly we're seeing... Yes, we have the downside of comparisons and the other challenges that we have. But the, just being the exposure of ourselves to art is is working on us. I think it's working on us to, to grow us. Well, sure. That's what that's what starts a ref, ha, having refinement is. Yeah, what you're saying. There's a ton of content. There's a lot of content. But having discernment is an educated part of it is, is exactly like to be able to discern a, and you know it's just, that's an opinion thing too it's like you like what you like for whatever reasons that you like it but discernment is what gives you refined tastes and so then you become like like any discerning like if art dance food Right. Whatever, you know, like you make your decisions about that. But the more you pay attention to something, like if you're a fan of that and you pay more attention to it, you learn more about it. Each time exactly. you learn more about it and you get a deeper understanding or a deeper tasting or a deeper feeling or it moves you more. I mean, you know, all the yep. different things that these things do to our senses that it's great. That's why we love it, right? That's what we want our entertainment to do is exactly. to move us. And so what's entertaining you, intriguing you, interesting you now at, at this time in your life? Just uh, what I couldn't do when I was working all the time, and I was surrounded with just incredible, inspiring music of all kinds, but there's friends of mine playing in town, you know, just things that are happening here that I couldn't go to because I was working yeah. all the time. And so now I can go, you know, hear my friends. And so I go I go to church on Monday and go hear Elias Hasselgur and, and uh, James Polk who just turned 78, who's the mentor of so many jazz musicians in this town, who was, who was Ray Charles' music director for years, and, and just these monster musicians. And, I, and I, then I go to Don's Depot, where Chris Gage, like with a piano and have people sit in, it's just, it's like cheers, like you walk in and there are people, hey. it's a time capsule. 
you walk in and their people have been going there since they were young and now their kids are there and their grandkids were going to a wedding of some friends they're there and so it's just this family thing where all these different kinds of music happen and it's just a real it's personalized in a way that you that there's really not another experience like that it's 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 personalized it, you feel they make you feel at home feel at home the audience can create it's just this great symbiotic relationship that you know this town has it, there's lots of these little things yeah. all around town which is kind of where we start with this but but now i can i get to go out and just kind of hear you know the the crafts people of of our business work their craft you know and just be yep. an audience member and enjoy it and, and i was thinking about that as <clears throat> as we get a chance like like we we have a certain number of people that win the lottery the the fame lottery yeah but it appears to me that 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 just is is whatever it is some kind of universal pinball or <laughs> some something that just happens the the number gets drawn and they go right. but then underneath this of equal talent and of equal as any of the superstars we see is this huge extraordinary conglomeration of people that we get a chance to experience if we're willing to go out and do it yeah. and there is an extraordinary number as you were talking about well in, the, in this we have such an embarrassment of riches here and that's changing because it's the community's not supporting the economy's not supporting the musicians and the artists because the cost of living is becoming so high. I know many exactly. are leaving, but uh, but I've been many times since I, and the reason I can do this is I retired from the university uh, three and a half years ago. Right. And, you know, from recording the symphony and Conspirari and uh, the work that I was doing, it took it taking a lot of my time. Uh, now that I'm retired, I can go out and, and hear stuff. And I would go, I would go to hear people that are world-class musicians. And there would be five people and it didn't even cost anything to get in, and there were five people there, and two of them, one was the sound guy, and one of them was the bartender, yeah. and one of them was me, and it's just a travesty to to me. Anyway, it's just like what a waste that you have these incre this incredible talent that is really just being given to you, and nobody shows up to receive it. That's what I'm wondering, though, is that it that this is where where I'm thinking that the that the both the internet and the ways that we're expanding because think of, if think about it, fifty thousand people that were just deeply um, in, enamored and completely in on a on an artist out of million four billion yeah. four point six billion is a tiny tiny mm. tiny percentage but you know that there there that there are 50,000 people that have enough means to be able to give a little bit yeah you would hope to support that one artist that that, that they would be nuts about that artist yeah. of that time just in the if we could figure out a way to use the law the law of large numbers <laughs> right. to be able to 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 support so that if we had like during Shakespeare's time where you had actually working actors mm. You're a working actor. No, you're not making Matt Damon money, but you're making you're, you're having right. your health care paid for, and you're having your home paid You've got for, your and you're basics working. Taken care of. You got your basics taken care of, and you're getting a chance to work and create and to mm -hmm. do what you were put on earth to do. There must be some way. It's, to me, it's systemic. There must be something that we can do to, to work on that. Well, I think number one is just people understanding the value of of it again, and some and more often is I don't agree with this, but that's often the case. You know, just like Joni Mitchell said, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone. I think you, you have to, people have to have it taken away from them for them to really start to understand how valuable this thing was. Be, and, and it, you know, the fact, there's so many things, and that's a whole other talk we could have about what took money out of the music economy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, you know, was share, like I was teaching, and so I'm talking to young people about this and trying to, Understand it, and I'm still trying to educate them about this is valuable. So, you, so you know, you won't you won't even pay a dollar for the song. I mean, you'll pay a dollar for a Coke, a soda that's going to be gone. Right. Uh, you know, as soon as you drink it, you know, you, and and that I got. I'm trying to get them to tell me what is it, and they say, oh well, yeah, you it's merchandise. So you sell T-shirts at the concert, and that's how you make your money. So what you're saying is that the T-shirts are what's valuable, and the the T-shirts are more valuable than music. So it's 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 just a educational paradigm shift 
of people understanding the value of of good art. I mean, there's a there's a lot of you know crap. After I mean, that but wasn't there a lot? Wasn't there crap during there the was during? This, I'm, I'm talking about there wasn't as much, and here's the reason why: because it was more expensive. You actually actually had to invest a Thank lot you. of time, money, and energy to make something reach this certain level, and and you couldn't get enough attention. Like the thing that you're saying is like. 50, now you have to get 50,000 people yourself or whatever. There were companies that would do it, but you had to exhibit, you know, the saleability in a market so that they would be willing to invest And get in your you. craft at a certain level. Right, exactly. And so there were get, the gatekeepers were sort of, uh, it was an economic barrier to some degree that had to be met, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that, you, you know, because you can record stuff in your bedroom that you can make art, which is great. You, a great artist will do that. You give a great artist anything, and they'll make great art, art out of it. I mean, it's yep. a beautiful, amazing thing about artists is just, yep. you just give them, you know, like this a genius that I work with. I mean, pots and pans. I mean, he does, he makes music on <laughs> You know, typewriter, and he makes music. Yep. You know, so, uh, but, but, but marketing, and so that's the thing you're saying. So, like, the, the uh, lottery of yeah. what makes it to the top of what, what doesn't, I, you know, promotion, marketing, they had a better PR person or they knew how to use YouTube better or Who whatever right. it is. But that's kind of what it has to be is you've got to get enough people, you've got to get exposed to enough people and knock their socks off. Yeah. Because that's the other thing, it's super competitive. You want you want people's attention? Well, you here's all the people you've got to compete with. You've got to get their attention over everybody else's or and movies, now you've got home theaters. So, you know, entertainers, you know, you better make what you're doing really exciting because this is your competition. You've got blockbuster movies that people have in yep. home theaters at home. Why would they go somewhere else? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's what we're learning. And this is where I think we're on a, on a, a journey, on, a, on an growth. artistic journey and a, and a growth. How are we going to, because we know, you and I both know that, that, that music is essential to the human. I don't know when it arose or how, but but I, I'm 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 certain that we were that 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 uh, grunts and and preceded language and that music preceded words. Well, and rhythm, something, you know, and because, rhythm and rhythm and all the yeah. Well, and a big part of what hey, we Donna, call music got, is rhythm based. And yeah, so we're, keep going. Oh, we're running out of time. But, we're not running out of time. The, we're beginning thing, our time. Like that sort of to me is the basis. And this is what music does. It's the most powerful thing that do, nothing else does is it makes people feel. Great music and this is the rhythmical aspect of it mostly makes people makes your body move involuntarily. If it's really great, yeah. you can't not move. It moves you physically. And that's music's power. And so it starts at that, that primal level, you know, dance. What makes people dance? When you were, you were telling me this wonderful story that I wanted to go into about you and B.B. King. <laughs> so, so, because this had to be, I mean, tell me that story as we Oh, well, on. it was, I moved to Abilene, you know, my parents divorced, I moved to Abilene, driving around with a friend of mine. I saw this, this primary color, you know, poster thing on a telephone pole that they'd had back then. It was, and it, it was like... The essence of it was like B.B. King and his band of renown and like the review of the other people. Yeah. And, and I was like, whoa, B.B. King is going to play here. We got to go. And so we <laughs> got, we found out we got tickets. We went and, and it, the place held about 1,000, maybe 1,200 people. And, but there were about three or 400 people there. And, you know, we'd gotten tickets for the So, the, you know, the opening band did their thing. And then everybody just started to move down front because why not? And then B.B. King's band, you know, sets up his intro and blah, and then he comes out and he goes, looks like we got ourselves a private party. <laughs> and, and just, and just play, and like the band, just, they just did their whole show. Like balls to the wall, just like they do if they were playing Carnegie Hall or whatever, like the biggest house in the world. And they were, they were bring, like, bringing one up on stage, went up on stage dancing, and it was just, it was, it was like we got to have a private party oh. with B.B. King. And, it, and it, it just really showed me, like, how important, the, and perfect, this is a level of professionalism yes. that you've got to have, that when you go out there, it doesn't matter if there are three or four people there. No. That you've got to go kick 
but you know you've got to go bring your A game and like really lay it out there. Yeah. And and I'm a, I was a loyal I was already a fan, but I, like from that point I just went, this man can is an idol. You know this is one of my heroes because that's the bar. That's the professionalism, and that's what he brought. He brought that, and that that's. Oh yeah, and other people did too. I mean, recognized it, and other people. But that was the paradigm. That was yep. the the best example of. It doesn't matter who's there or who's not there. Just entertain mm -hmm. the people there. Make it be the best it can be. You never know who's going to be there. You never know. And, and that, if, if each person, if I can do that, that, that's one of those, you know, dance as though no one is watching. Yeah. As you're bringing your best, as you're sweetening, as you're working, as you're sitting in that, in that, in that wonderful uh, place where, where there's only five people there and you're getting a chance to do, th this is you. You're, you're getting a connection to, to well, all of us. It's just an opportunity and you just have to make of it what you can. Yeah. And, you know, I've been in those places and, you know, it's hard. It's hard to get the energy to go, you know. Yeah. We'd love to have a full house and people going crazy, but it's like, let's see if we can get these five people to really feel something. Thank you, Andy. Uh, well, thank, thank you me. very much. That, 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 was, uh, that was what I'm... Uh, Well, you know, I could talk to you find out about your story, too, for hours. Thank you. I, uh, you know, the thing is, is that I want to, um, I want you to help me find some of the people that you would listen to. Oh. You would ha help me to, sure. to to find the story as we're as I'm as we're redoing a uh, reasoning spontaneous conversation. You know some people that we would never find that we would we'd be able to bring in and have conversation. You can edu help